a pregnant stingray's ultrasound. That's what you're looking at, and it's because Charlotte, the stingray who lives in the North Carolina aquarium, well, she doesn't have an obvious baby daddy. You see, the aquarium doesn't have any male rays, and Charlotte hasn't shared a tank with one in over eight years, but she does share that tank with two young male sharks, and caretakers noticed that she was covered in bite marks, and apparently sharks get kind of rough when they, uh, when they mate. So Charlotte is due within the next two weeks. We should have some solid answers soon, but I can't wait for those solid answers. So who do I call? I call <laughs> Forrest Galante, a wildlife expert and biologist, and today, I guess, the stand-in for Mari Povich. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? I mean, like, first of all, I was, I've been Googling a sure. lot, and I don't want to show the images, but from a mechanic standpoint, can, like, a... It is possible, yeah, it is. believe it or not, and especially with small benthic sharks. There are two small benthic male sharks in that aquarium. It is possible for copulation to take place, anatomically speaking. Anatomically speaking. Yes, okay. absolutely. And, and so does that mean that the sharks would come, like, because I'm looking at these pictures, and I've yeah. actually seen you post videos of sharks doing it. I have. I have indeed. And it just <laughs> seems like a crazy, like, wrestling match. So yep. the stingray would be on the bottom? Yeah, so there would be this wrapping around sensation don't look, where there'd don't look be, at uh, yeah, it's graphic. <laughs> um, the, the animal's bodies would become intertwined, and then uh, the male, which has a hemipene, actually two penises, would then insert into the female's cloaca. Um, which is a very graphic way of saying it's sort of this dance, it sounds gross, it's actually pretty beautiful, but I don't know if anybody's ever seen a stingray and a shark going at it, so that's this is a whole <laughs> different story we got. So do you, do you think that this is what happened? We're going to see this mutant, or do you think that something else is going on? Well, Gotti, there's really three options here, okay. okay? So the first one is the one that we've just discussed, which is this crazy hybridization interspecies relationship. The second is something that uh, sharks raise and some reptiles are capable of doing, which is sperm retention. So if there was a male in with that female stingray some eight plus years ago, believe it or not, if they had made it eight years ago, that female would be capable of retaining the sperm and putting out offspring eight years later. But it's highly, highly unlikely because that's a very, very long Yeah, expiration period. date on that sperm exactly. is uh, probably exactly. not eight years. Exactly. So what's the third option? So the third and I think most interesting option is a process called parthenogenesis. So parthenogenesis is an evolutionary adaptation that some creatures have developed to basically save the species. So when a female is isolated, a uh, female of a shark, a ray, some species of reptile are isolated with no males for long enough, something sort of triggers in their brain and goes, hey, we got to save the species. If I don't reproduce, the species is going to dry up and disappear. And parthenogenesis kicks in, which is basically a clone where the mother will produce a female clone offspring of herself, in ho or several in some cases, in hopes of those offspring, which are perfectly fertile, going out and hopefully finding a mate to so mate. So like virgin birth, or, virgin or birth. if I remember Jurassic Park, like life finds a way. Finds a way. That's right, Gotti. <laughs> That's so wild. It's a fantastic so process. When we find out about the, like, the birth is going to happen, yep. and it's going to pop out, and we will have conclusive answers then, but are we going to be able to study the genome? Are we going to learn about the genes? Yeah, we should be able to tell. I mean, if it were some sort of hybrid, it would be very, very clear immediately that this is something, looks like a guitar fish, something <laughs> halfway between a shark and a stingray. So I think we'll be able to rule that out very quickly. Whether it's parthenogenic or whether there's genetic diversity, we'll be able to tell by taking DNA and actually looking at the cellular structure of the animals. Oh my gosh, Forrest, I could talk to you about this all night and I love the shark shirt. <laughs> it seemed the guns, dude. Thank you so much. We gotta go fishing soon. <laughs> Please, come up, Gotti, anytime. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.